Hey there everyone, this is Danielle taking a look at Super Mario Maker 2. Uh, the reason I'm looking again is there's been a recent update, uh, it's version 3 now, and I haven't looked at what's in this game for a while, so I thought I'd check out some of the new content, see what you can do now, the cool stuff, and yeah, just, just get a feel for it. So I've already loaded the game up, as you can see. <laughs> Uh, and it's version 3, it says down the bottom there, so we're just gonna jump into make mode. There are new parts to play with. Check the Q&A section of the play guide to learn more about them. Alright, let's have a look. Uh, what new parts are in this update? Uh, Super Mario Bros. The SMB2 Mushroom, okay. Frog Suit, Power Balloon, Super Acorn, Boomerang Flower, Cannon Box, Propeller Box, Goomba Mask, Bullet Bill Mask, Red Power Block, We've also got the Koopalings, Mecha Coopers, the Cursed Key, the On-Off Trampoline, and the Dotted Line Block, which was already available in everything except 3D World, but I think they added it. Yeah, now available in all game styles. Okay, so yeah, the exciting new feature, basically, uh, there's one new power-up in each style, and a bunch of other stuff in 3D World, and the Koopalings, also a Cursed Key. So let, let's try a couple things out. Okay, uh, new notifications, uh, not now. I just haven't played the game in quite a while. Um, but yeah, we should be able to, I forget how to work this. Uh, let's play buttons. Y button? No, Y is how you move. All right, yeah, you press up. Uh, I haven't, I haven't played this in so long, I've forgotten the basic controls. <laughs> um, okay. So we should have some new power-ups and stuff. Let's have a look. Yep. So yeah, you have the big mushroom, which makes you, uh, if you give that to Toadette, you get, like, a pixelier Toadette who can break stuff, I believe, when you stand on it. So it makes you real big. Uh, I think you can break certain stuff, but I don't know what. It also counts as a, another layer of power-up. Um, but that's not the new one. The new one is, let me just take that off, there we go. The new one is the uh, Mario Bros. 2 mushroom, which is this one. So let's just put one of them here. See, it, just, it looks like the mushrooms did in that game. And it moves, which is weird because they didn't move in that game. And when you get it, you immediately get hurt. <laughs> Hang on, I'm just, I'm just gonna clear the map and do it with a nice clean map so we've got less nonsense going on. Here we go. There we go. Okay, uh, so we got our toad out here. Let's. Uh, just grab some ground. There we go. Um, yeah, let's change the theme, just make it ground. There we go. Okay. Um, so yeah, this mushroom is only available in SMB1, which is weird. I don't really know what the SMB2 mushroom has to do with being in SMB1, but you know, whatever. But yeah, it changes your graphics. Uh, I don't know if it makes anyone float. It doesn't look like it. I don't have, like, a uh, princess floating. It does do this, though. Uh, in SMB2, you could charge up your jump by holding the down button for a little while, and then you could jump. I believe it also, if we throw in some enemies here, just a couple Goombas. That's not a Goomba. Uh, go away. These controls are very confusing. Um, more than I expected. I believe if we put in a Goomba like this, uh, let's, let's make it a big Goomba. Why not? I believe if we're in SMB2 style, and we and we see a big Goomba like that, we can actually stand on the big Goomba. Yes. Uh, you can stand on, I think, all enemies, or at least lots of enemies, when you have the SMB2 power-up. And maybe pick them up? Yes, you have to press down and then B, and then B or Y, whatever your run button is, but you can pick up big Goombas. There we go. And run around with them. So yeah, that's a real weird way to design SMB2 support. It's the way I would have done it is you go over here and you pick SMB2 as your game style, but that's not an option. Weird. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's the SMB2 mushroom power-up. There's another power-up that was added in a previous update that I didn't really look at, so let's do that too. Uh, also only available in this style. It is here somewhere. At least I think it's in this one. Maybe you've... I don't know. Uh, no, that's just mushrooms. Give it wings. Can I make it bigger? 
Oh, I see. I can make it progressive power up. Um, hmm. I know there's another power up in the style, but I don't know how to get to it because I'm not seeing it. In the selection. Maybe it's over here. Maybe it's a gizmo. Uh, maybe you need to unlock it somehow? I don't know. Um, the thing that it is, is there's a Master Sword power-up available in the SMB1 style. But I can't see it anywhere, so I don't know how you would use it. Hmm. Let's bring out the Play Guide and just have a quick look. Play Guide. <laughs> Q&A. Okay, there it is. Master Sword was in version 2. Um, they also added some other things. Spikes, Pokies, P-Block, Frozen Coin, Dash Block. To place the Master Sword, first place a Super Mushroom and then change its type. Okay. Okay. Uh, a Frozen Coin, by the way, is a regular coin, except you can only get it by, uh, melting, um, a thing. <laughs> uh, you, you have to use, like, a Fire Flower or whatever to, to melt the, uh, you know, the, the thing. To, to melt, to melt the frozenness, and then you can grab the coin. Uh... Oh my god. <laughs> okay, yeah, we can change it to a sword, and then we can give ourselves a Master Sword. Right? Okay, and yeah, the Master Sword turns you into Link. You can stab with the run button. I think you can run across gaps and stuff. I'm not sure what you can do. Okay, you have your bow. Uh, which you can shoot in various directions. Uh... Okay, if you hold down and then press the run, hold the run button as well, you can actually do that. Which is like the Pegasus boots. You also have bombs. So you have a bunch of stuff, which is kind of weird because you're getting all this from one power-up. And if you get hurt by anything, let me just demonstrate by getting hurt by something. You lose it all. You go back to being little you again. So you can't really build like levels that depend on having certain power-ups unless you just keep giving people the sword over and over again. And there's similar problems with the SMB2 item, like, it would make more sense to make these things optional, like, game styles or whatever, rather than power-ups available in this style. But that's what they've been doing, so there you go. Anyway, um, like, at least SMB2 should be down here in the extra game styles, even if it has to be different to the others, but, eh. Anyway, let's look at Mario 3. So this is Mario 3, it's the, the third Mario game. Uh, you can see we now have a frog suit there. Uh, we still- we already had the Super Leaf, that's not new. Let's look at the Frog Suit. Uh, this is a power-up that was in Mario 3. I don't know if it bounced like that, but I assume it did, because it's a frog. And yeah, it makes your movement really weird, as you can see. It's not effective by holding the run button, as far as I can tell. Well, maybe a little bit. But yeah, basically, it makes you a frog. You jump, I think, extra high. And... You walk really slow, but the way it, reason it's useful is because if you happen to be underwater... It means you can just push a direction to swim that way, basically. And if you hold the Y button, you swim real fast. So yeah, the frog suit is an underwater power-up, basically. Um, and, you know, this is more reasonable as a power-up than the, the SMB2 mushroom and the Master Sword and all that stuff that changes the game style. Because this was how it worked in the base game, and it just gave you a power-up to how you play. So, eh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, that's uh, Mario 3 checked out. Uh, and that's the new power-up, yeah, the frog suit. So let's move on to Mario World, which also has a new power-up, which is the pea balloon. Uh, we are going to want to not be underwater for this, so let's just flip us back to ground. And take ourselves back to the start of the level. Uh, if I can figure out how to do that. Right, you yeah, press X. Okay, do, 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 do. Okay, so there's the pea balloon. Uh, and there's a Galoomba. I still think they should put regular Goombas into this style as well. Okay, so yeah, the pea balloon, it works differently to the way it worked in World. In World, you always were this way up and you just move very slowly. Uh, in this one, you can press the jump button or the other button. You can press either button to boost yourself in a certain direction and it doesn't time out unless you take damage. Whereas the one in World, it timed out after a little while. So you can do some interesting, uh, like, races, I guess, using this new feature. It, it's, it, it's different to the way it is in World, but I think that's a good change. Like, it makes it more usable. Um, so that's, that, that's a good one overall, that power-up. Uh, then we have NSMBU here. The new power-up in this one 
is one that really ought to have been there to begin with, because this is the power-up you had in this game. It is the Acorn Suit. Um, previously this style, which is explicitly the NSMBU style, only had the Propeller Mushroom, which isn't really in that game very much. So, that's weird. Anyway, the Acorn Suit is a mobility power-up like the Propeller Mushroom, but not as good, basically. You have Gliding, which I'm doing now. You have, if you press, there we go, if you press uh, the shoulder button in midair, you get a little boost. You can also group onto walls, so I'll just pin in a wall so we can show that. Uh, oops, wrong button. Um, miss, yeah, I'm not very good at controlling this part. <laughs> um, just I'm just out of practice, basically, because I don't do this very often. Let's, yeah, make a wall, like so. There we go, that'll do. There we go. So yeah, if I grip the wall, yeah, you just grip onto it and you can jump off again. Which is basically like a wall jump, but you can also grip for, a, I think, a few seconds before you fall. Yeah, you start sliding down. So yeah, um, it's a good power-up, but it's really weird that it took this long to add it when it is the power-up that was in this game, and the Propeller Mushroom was basically from NSMB Wii rather than SMBU. I don't know. You, you could get Propeller Mushrooms in an SMBU, but they were a lot rarer. You mostly found these. Oh no! Yeah. Well, that's way too far. Anyway, um, so that's it for that style. Let's flip ourselves over to the extra style, which is 3D World. Uh, because 3D World is weird, it has to reset the course when you do this. I don't know why they designed it like this instead of just making it a normal style like the others, but yeah, it's just completely separate. It's its own thing. And it's real weird. Uh, I want regular ground, please. Let's just put some ground in, so we've got something to work with. There we go. There we go, okay, so... There we go, there we go. They added a bunch of new stuff here. Um, this one is the one that was most needing stuff, because it's so weird and doesn't have things that other styles do, so that's good. Um, I haven't shown the hammer before. You have to unlock this by playing in story mode, so I'm just going to demonstrate what that does. It makes you build a toadette. Uh, you can press the Y button to smash things, or I think it's up and Y? Yeah. If you, if you push up and then tap Y, you can create little boxes like this. And you can smash things. And that's, pre and that's pretty much it. Um, and this isn't a very good attack because of the way it affects your movement. But yeah, it, it, it's, it's a weird power-up. And it's only available in this style. But that's not new, that was in the base game. You just had to unlock it. Uh, the thing that's new is this, the boomerang flower. Uh, which was also in the base game, so it's good that they've added it. Uh, it's not quite as iconic as the cat suit, so I understand why they made the cat suit the the one that they gave you al already. Uh, let's just do that. Okay, so yeah, boomerang flower. You can throw boomerangs. Um, they're an attack. They hit things. Uh, apparently, being the boomerang suit doesn't make you bigger. It normally does, which is interesting. Uh, maybe a little bigger. I don't know. Let me see. It only makes you a tiny bit bigger. Oh, that's the same. That's the same as the mushroom. Okay, well that's fine then. Anyway, yeah. So, boomerang is an option now. It's not super exciting, honestly. I, I guess it's a little different, but eh. you can collect coins and stuff with it. I guess is the coolest thing. You can't really do that with the fire flower, which oh, hang on, that was cool. Hang on. Okay, I'm convinced. It's pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so they added that. They added a bunch of other stuff to this style too, though. So if we flip over here, these are all hats, basically. Um, you get the propeller box, you can uh, drop it on your head like this, and then you start up. So now I'm wearing a propeller on my head. If I press a shoulder button, I can get a bit of a boost from it. Uh, and you can see the little, uh, like, lights on the side of the block. That's how many boosts I have. So I can use three and then it runs out. It also gives you a bit of hovering once you've used it, which is nice. Or you can press down to, to zoom down faster. So yeah, propeller block. This was in the base game. It's a good thing to add. Um, it's, it's still weird that it's only in this style and they're not just making everything available everywhere, but whatever. Uh, then you have the cannon box, which again, is a little hat. Uh, just place your previous hat, there we go. And as you might expect, it lets you shoot stuff. 
Uh, I'm pressing the B button to do that, or the, the run button. It's the Y button because of the way I have things laid out, but yeah. You can charge up your shots if you want, or you can just go pew, pew, pew. Uh, the shoulder button doesn't do anything, which is kind of strange. Uh, I would have made the shoulder button always activate these, these hats, because they're all very similar in design, but no. Uh, then you have uh, the red power block, I think, is also a hat. Yeah, it is. I'm not sure what this one does. I assume it explodes or something, but... No? I have no idea what this does. Um... I can do my normal spin jump. Um... Maybe I need someone else to stand on me or something? I, I, I don't know what a red power block does. Uh... Let's just try placing a second one here and just take a look. Yeah, I have no idea what this does. It doesn't seem to do anything. Maybe if I crouch? No, that's just normal normal backflip. That's how that works in this game. Hmm. Okay, I don't know what that one does. Um, I'm not familiar with with most of 3D World. I do know what this one does, the bullet bill mask. Uh, this one's kind of cool. So, we saw the propeller earlier, which let you fly vertically. This thing, uh, if I figure out how to activate it. Okay, okay, you just press B in midair. Yeah, it lets you fly forwards. Pretty far. <laughs> so that's cool. Um, pretty neat. Uh, so yeah, that's just another power-up that you can use if you want to. And you just press B in mid-air. I, I would have thought it would be a shoulder button again, but no, they all have different controls for some reason. Uh, the Goomba mask is probably the hardest to demonstrate. Uh, not really. Basically, yeah, you get a little Goomba on your head. There aren't any buttons that do anything but you can be a Goomba, and the reason that's useful is if you have an enemy, uh, let's throw one in, like a, another Goomba, there we go. They don't think you're an opponent if you're in the Goomba mask. Uh, I, in the base game, I think it only applied to Goombas, not to all enemies, but in this game, if we get, say, a Koopa car, if I can find one, uh, they will also assume we're not an enemy because we are in a car. No, because we have a Goomba mask on, sorry. You can see they're asleep. Uh, whereas if we take a hit... Oh, whoops. That wasn't what I was trying to do. Off we go! <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, they, they fall asleep because we're in a Goomba mask and we, they think we're harmless. But if we place, say, another Goomba here and take some damage... I think you can still take damage from them? Yeah, they immediately wake up. So yeah, um, those are all the different hats, um, I don't know what else they added, oh yeah, um, dotted line blocks, those are the ones that switch over when you hit an on-off switch, they weren't available in this style before for some reason, which is very weird, uh, I think the switch was available, but the blocks weren't, eh, but they were available in the other styles already, so you sort of know what to expect, um, the cursed key, I think, is only available in one of the options, right? Sorry, I have to keep checking the guide because I'm not familiar with all this. Q&A. Uh, new parts. Let's scroll down to here. Cursed key is in Mario 1, apparently. Alright. I would have thought Mario... Oh, right. No, 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 that makes sense. Yeah, because, because the cursed key, it's meant to be like in Mario 2 when, um, you pick up a key and then the, uh, Fanto follows you around. But Mario 2 isn't in this game, it's just a power-up for Mario 1, so of course they put the cursed key in Mario 1 as well. <sighs> this, this design is so weird. Anyway, uh... Let's make some ground, and then let's put in a cursed key and see what it does. I don't know if I need to place a Fanto as well, or just the key. So let's place a key and see what happens, I guess. Keys are over here. I don't know why they count as gizmos instead of like, items, because they're, they're keys, right? Change its type to... Cursed, there we go. We have a cursed key, let's go pick it up, let's see what happens. Well, I dropped it. I think to get a key, you actually need to have at least one locked door, since otherwise they're useless. So, uh, let's make a door. I think I just pick a door like this, and then... I have to lock it, right? Yes. There we go. There, now I have the key. Am I gonna get attacked? Yep, here comes Fanto. Okay, so 
yeah, you, just, you can place keys that work like in Mario 2, except that you can't drop keys, which you could do in Mario 2, which was a way to stop them from following you, so... Uh, let me just try giving myself Mario 2 powers and see if that lets me drop the key. The answer is no, because it still just follows me. Hmm... So yeah, it doesn't really play much like Mario 2 at all. Uh, in that game, yeah, you picked up a key by standing on it, and then Fanto started following you, and so you threw the key away from yourself to stop them from following you. But you can't do that, because the key just bounces along and Fanto follows you very slowly. I think Fanto was more threatening in Mario 2 than in this game. It's just the one, and he's kind of slow. <sighs> anyway, um... So that's most of the stuff covered. Uh, the Koopalings. We have Koopalings now, so let's have a look at that. Uh, let's just uh, get rid of some of this stuff. Watch out. Uh, what's your name? Toadette. Uh, so yeah, Koopalings. Here we go. We got we got Larry. Here's Larry. Here I go. And they have their little wands, and you can pop them on the head. So yeah, we have a bunch more bosses now, basically. We got Larry, and we got... And this is how they worked, basically, in Mario 3. Uh, and they dropped their wand. Yeah, same basic idea. Uh, if we jump in here and have a look, we also have Iggy, Lud Ludwig, Morton... R is it Ludwig or Ludwig? Like, normally we pronounce Ludwig, but maybe the Cooper's different. Roy, Lemmy, Wendy, Iggy. Also, we have a Mecha Cooper over here. Um, I think if you place Lemmy... Oh, hang on, what? Can I not have both? Oh, I do have both of them, they just look a little... Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, he makes these balls, you can... They bounce you around, you can bounce on them, it's kind of fun. You can pop them on the head if you want. So yeah, um, they work like they do in Mario 3. If I switch over to the Mario 3 style, it might be the same visuals. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's pretty much what it looked like in Mario 3. Uh, and now I'm a frog again. <laughs> Because of course I am. Uh, let me just uh, deselect. I keep forgetting you have to press X to do that. I'm going to press B because that just makes more sense. But eh. So yeah, you can you have a bunch more bosses now. They have a bit of variety, which is nice. Uh, I think their world sprites are actually really nice. So let's switch to world and have a quick look. There you go. Uh, let's see them in motion. So let's take off this pea balloon because it's ridiculous. Uh, I guess a feather instead. There we go. And yeah, they, they looked very different in World Proper, um, but I think these sprites are really nice, so I'm glad they made these new ones. Uh, and they fit with the, you know, aesthetic limitations of the Super Nintendo and all that, but they're just real nice. <laughs> uh, and they're also available in the NSMBU style, and they look the, pretty much the way you'd expect. Yeah, they just got these modern looks that are boring. <laughs> And they act exactly like they do in SMBU. So you can make the usual sorts of boss battles with these guys if you want. Just kind of bounce on this? Yes, I can. So yeah, um, you got all that. You've also got Mecha Coopers, so let's have a quick look at those. Uh, those were in World. I think there might be some in this game, in um, SMBU originally, but can't remember. Basically, you can bop them, and then you can pick them up and throw them at stuff. And that's how you fought Bowser in World. You had to grab the Mercury Coopers and throw them up at Bowser. You can't throw things up in this game, though. Oh, maybe, maybe you can in the World style? Let's have a quick look. Okay, so that's exactly what they looked like in World. That has not been changed. You can grab them. And yeah, you can throw them up. So you can do that style of fight, except that, you know, Bowser doesn't fight that way in this game. But you can do a fight similar. <laughs> Um, actually I should check whether the cape spin affects them, because it shouldn't. No, it does. Uh, in World, cape spinning did not affect Mecha Coopers for some reason. I don't know if that was a mistake, but they've changed it. <laughs> um, cool. Um, we can look at the other styles of Mecha Cooper as well, just while we're here. Uh, Mario 3, I think, didn't have Mecha Coopers. Well, maybe it did. I can't remember. I assume a tailspin works on them, it does. Mario 1 definitely didn't have Mecha Coopers, but it does now. 
and they look kind of silly. Um, also, I have the big mushroom now because that's the corresponding power up in this game. And you can't pick them up because this is Mario 1 and picking up things wasn't invented yet. I'm holding the pick up button, but it's not working. Okay, um, so that's all the new items, I believe. Uh, there's actually also this, which is pretty exciting. Um, World Maker. Basically, you can create a... Uh, I'll, I'll also open it up and show you. Coo Coo Coo. With this new update, you can make your own super worlds with a collection of up to eight individual worlds. Coo 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 Coo. Each individual world needs a way to get from the start to the goal, which is the castle. I already did that for you here. Coo 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 Coo. Keep in mind you'll need to set a course in the castle spot for each world to work. Touch the castle a whole day to set a course. You can set other courses, toad houses, and warp pipes on each world as well. From world bot in the main menu, you can upload a saved super world to course world. You only have one super world uploaded at a time, but it can contain up to eight worlds. Start over from scratch, use the reset rocket and make the super world of your dreams. So yeah, it's, it's the Super Mario World overworld editor, basically. It's very limited. Um, for example, you can see bridges here. In the base game, you had bridges stacked above each other, and they were going over cliffs and stuff in some cases. In, in world, I mean. Uh, but in this game, bridges automatically create water underneath. So you can't do that. For example, if I try to do this here... Oh no, that's sort of working. Let me see. Hmm, now I've just broken everything. <laughs> Let's try doing it on this side, because there's not already stuff over here. There we go. Um, and then that needs to connect with a bridge. So yeah, it's it's kind of fiddly to use, but it sort of works. Sort of. Um, and let's get rid of this piece. Huh. Apparently that doesn't connect. Okay, so a bridge cannot connect the tops of two cliffs in this game, which it can do in vanilla uh, smoo. So yeah, that's an annoying limitation. Uh, you're also limited to having five courses per world, one of which has to be the castle. Uh, you can have three, these toad houses, they're basically, I'll just place one to demonstrate. You can pick one of these three mini games and they give you one-ups. And then you can have two warp pipes and they always connect to one another, I believe is the idea. So you put one here, Put one here, and then we start it up. You can go through the pipe and come out of the other pipe. So, it doesn't really do anything, but it looks cool, I guess. Anyway, um, and yeah, you can assign courses. So you go to here and you pick... Uh, I haven't made a whole lot of courses in this game. <laughs> there, so once you've assigned a course like that, this is now playable. I can go in... Uh, um, it's just like world. I'm not pressing any buttons right now. You automatically move to the next space We can go in and play the castle like this and It'll be whatever level you assigned So yeah, you can you can build like a sequence of levels together into a, into a court like a into a campaign of sorts, but you still can't have things like secret exits and you can't have switch palaces and various other things that the SMU overworld contained that made it so special. Um, all of the all of the courses you place are little red dots, but they are not uh, secret levels. That doesn't mean they have secret levels, because they don't. Which is sad, because I want secret levels. But you don't get them, unfortunately. Uh, you can add some decorations and stuff if you want. You can see I can change that to a cloud. Uh, I think I can change... oops. Uh, let me see. You can change these to water, so you can have you can have like water levels that are in water, like Smoo does. Uh, you can change what type of house that is. I already demonstrated that though. Bridges don't have any options, but you can move them around if you want. You can also spin them. You can have vertical bridges, um, and it can't be any bigger than what we're seeing right now. It will not scroll if you try to add stuff on the side. Uh, there are a few different themes, though. We can have a sky world, or a forest world, which looks like Forest of Illusion, of course. 
Uh, I believe it's always smoo based regardless of what type of levels you want to use. It's always going to look like it's in smoo. Which isn't a problem because smooth world map is incredibly charming, but it's a little disappointing. You make a space one with little rainbow bridges or a snow one. Yeah, it's got some decent options here. Uh, also, as mentioned, there are eight worlds to use, or up to eight. So you can have one of each theme if you want, or you can do something different. You can change the number of lives you start the game with. Um, if you want more challenge, you could dial it down or dial it up. If you don't want it to be more challenging, whatever. Um, but yeah, so... And if you've actually placed a level, then it'll make you do the level, but in test mode, you can press B to clear it and just skip actually playing the level in order to, to proceed to the next bit without having to test it. Uh, so yeah, that, that's fine. It's a very limited. Um, I think the absence of some way to denote a secret exit is the biggest problem here, because secret exits are what makes a world map worth having instead of a regular linear pathway. Um, I suppose you could still have a, a branch in the path and have two levels to pick from. Like, uh, I can probably demonstrate that. Let me see. Uh, if I put a bridge down here, and then I put a level on it, like... I don't think I have enough levels to do that, but let's see if I can pick one I've already picked. No, I can't. Okay, so yeah, if I had a level there and a level there, then you could choose which one to do. You wouldn't have to do both of them, I think. Uh... Um, but still, I think I think having secret exits and stuff hidden is just a major part of what makes this sort of game, sort of world map, so compelling. Uh, you can see also, you can customize what it looks like a bit. You can make it a water, or a desert, uh, or a snow. And there's a couple of different choices there, so depending on the type of level you've designed, you might want it to look a bit different. I don't think that has any effect on the gameplay, it's just a little bit of difference in appearance. Uh, pipes you can't mess with. Yeah, it's it's just, it's nice, but there's there's still a lot missing here that I think would make it a lot more compelling. Um, scrolling maps for one thing, uh, but also, basically, they should have looked at the Smoo world map and made sure anything on the Smoo world map is something you can do, because right now it's not. It's, it's very much not something you can do, which is disappointing. Um, it's still a very cool addition to the game, and I'm glad it's here, um, but it's got problems. This is Worldbot. From here you can play the super worlds you create in World Maker and upload them to Course World. So yeah, um, you can only have six super worlds, but considering how big they are, that's probably fine. Uh, if we jump over to Course World, there's actually a new option for going into a super world and playing it. You can now play super world, check out super worlds made from makers around the globe whenever you want. Okay. Over here you can click this little button here with the panicky peach. Super your pet cat world. Interesting. Okay, so you don't get to name the world by the looks of things. It's just super your your name world. That's kind of weird. Um, let's jump in and have a quick look at one because I haven't done this and I'd like to see what it does. Yeah, okay, so you don't get to name your super world, but you do get to name the levels, so that's probably okay. I'll help you, Peach. Uh, Ninji? Oh, I see, it's like a speedrun thing. Okay, so I can go to the first level here. Let's just jump in, and then it'll just be regular playing levels now. Um, and yeah, the, the level has a name. It's Night Day Desert. You have to use levels you've uploaded. You can't put in a level just to the world and not upload it separately. Uh, but I think the number of levels you're allowed to upload makes that probably okay. Oh my goodness, this looks dangerous. Ah! Oh my goodness. I may have bitten off more than I can chew here. Okay, it doesn't put you back to the world map when you die, which is interesting. Uh, I think you can go exit course and then, like, try again. Um, but that might take up a life, I don't know. Okay, this is Mario 1, so I can't slide down this hill, which is annoying. Can I go in this pipe? Yeah. Oh, that's another thing that annoys me. Warp pipes, right? This isn't new, this has been a problem with the game the whole time, but warp pipes can only lead to the sub-area. You can't have a warp pipe that leads to another place in the main area. Uh, for example, it's very popular in certain, like, rum hacks and stuff to have a warp pipe that just goes to the other side of the same warp pipe. You can do it with the glass pipes in, um, 3D World, but you can't do it in any other style. 
Uh, there's the angry sun over there. Uh, gonna dodge you and... Oh my goodness, this is busy. Uh... Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dang buzzy beetles. How dare you be proofed against fire. Or fireproof as some of us like to call it. <laughs> oh goodness. And yeah, that's gonna go back to the sub area. Which is this one. But yeah, you should be able to have pipes that lead to places in the same area, and you should be able to have doors that lead to the sub area. I don't really understand the restriction there. Because yeah, doors always go to the same area, whereas pipes always go to the other area. It's just a bit weird. Hmm. Hmm. Oops. You can jump over the flagpole. I, I, I didn't think of that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think I had a decent amount of lives, actually. I started with five, and now I have six. So. Okay, so you can like the course if you want, or you can just go ahead and go next. It was kind of hard. Mm, it was alright. And then when you go next, you'll be back on the world map and you can continue, I assume. Yes, that is how it works. Um, I would like to check if you can replay levels, so let me just give that a look. The answer is no, interestingly. I'm pressing A right now and nothing's happening. Huh. I mean, I guess that makes sense if you have a limited number of lives to do the whole thing and there's no save points, but it's still a little weird. Like, one of the other things about a world map is you can go back and, you know, farm power-ups and stuff like that. Come to think of it, if I go into this level, do I still have my power-ups? Uh, I think I was Big Mario, or Big Toadette. It looks like no. Interesting. Because, yeah, a major part of, of going between levels in those games is that you still had the power-ups you had in the previous level. But apparently that's not the case in this game. Interesting. Um, okay. <laughs> A uh, bit of a blind jump there. Um, hmm. And yeah, there's still no power preserve box, of course, because even though that's a major part of world, it's it's not in the world style because this game's rude. Uh, I guess I'm supposed to jump on the big bullet. Oh my god. Was I supposed to go on that pipe? Uh, I mean, bullets were coming out of it, but I think that means I can still... Not bullets, uh, bombs were coming out of it. But I think I can still go down pipes if they have something coming out, if it's been assigned to be one you can go down. Okay. Uh... No, I'm not supposed to go down there. In fact, I can't. What am I supposed to do exactly? Okay, that worked. I don't think that was how it was supposed to work, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious me. I'm not sure why it doesn't go back to the world map after beating a level. Hmm. Let's try going exit course and see if I lose a life. Uh, I see there are four lives. Exit course. I still have four lives, so you don't lose a life if you have to exit a course in the middle. Uh, can we do this little mini game here? Oh, this one's just like mashing buttons, I think. Yeah, you just mash the button. And you get a life out of it. Possibly more, if you're lucky. I think you might be able to get more. And then that destroys the toad house, and you can't go there again. Uh, if I go quit playing, does that save my progress, or...? Yeah, it's got a little balloon, which probably means it's going to reload my save if I go back there. Hmm. I don't know, there's just a lot of really weird decisions in the way they've done this. I can view played world, you can continue playing a super world from where you left off. Try playing super world by different makers too. Okay, so I can go to my profile here and look at the balloons to see all my checkpoints, basically. Okay, that's cool. Also, spoilers, why is it showing me that thumbnail instead of world 1? <laughs> Oh dear. Um, anyway, I think I've pretty much covered everything at this point. I think they said that 3.0.0 is the last major update the game is getting. 
uh, which I find a little questionable, I guess, because what they've put out here is so rudimentary. Um, it seems like they ought to be doing more, I guess. Uh, yeah, I got, got some stuff. That's not new, though. Yeah, version 3 is now live. Ninja speed runs. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, maybe they'll be making minor tweaks to it to do things like secret exits, but it feels like that's a pretty major enhancement to have more than one exit to a course in Mario Maker. But, uh, I don't know, I don't know. It's, it just feels like World Maker should be able to do at least the things that Super Mario World's World does. Like, even discounting the fact that, like, so many SMU ROM hacks have all this extra stuff added to them, uh, base SMU has more to it in the, in the overworld alone than this game does. And it lets you replay levels, and your power-ups carry over, and it has switch palaces, and all sorts of things that this game just doesn't do, which is just confusing. I wonder if story mode has any of this new stuff in it. I'm guessing no, but maybe it does. Yeah, this was exactly the same as before. Uh, hello. Yeah, I want jobs. Uh, no, these are exactly the same. This hasn't changed. Alright. Yeah, the story mode here is a little weird. I, I don't know how well it worked. I mean, I played it, but... Like, the story itself wasn't very engaging. It was just get some coins to make this castle b b built again. And the, like, courses and stuff weren't really linked together in any way. It might have been better if they'd had something like the Super World thing, and then you could go through, a, like, worlds with levels in them instead of just here's a list of levels you can do, which is what this does. It also would sort of make sense if the story mode involved actually making levels, because this is Mario Maker. Um, I'm not sure how they would, you know, grade that, but, eh, it would have made sense. Um... Anyway, yeah, this is a game that I, am. Um, Shared a friend list. Don't allow. I don't know what that means. Oh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's on the default setting, but I have no idea what that's done. Uh, anyway, yeah, so that's that's um, Mario Maker 2 version 3, which is, I guess, underwhelming is the way I put it. Um, Like, having the ability to make worlds of linked together levels is really compelling but it's it's so limited compared to what you what what the worlds do in the game that this is clearly meant to look like and like i like i i mean there's more weird world stuff in in the new super mario bros games but like this is a smoo world and it, it can't do a lot of the things that smoo worlds do for example these pipes right there are warp pipes in Smoo, and they never lead to somewhere on the same map. They always go to a place in another world. Uh, for example, there was a pipe to enter World 3, and then a couple of pipes to exiting World 3 in different ways. There was a pipe that shortcutted you to the end of the game uh, as part of the Star Road thing. And there were pipes all over the place, but there were never pipes like this that just led to another part of the same map. Hmm, there also weren't toad houses that's been added. Like, that, that wasn't a thing in Smoo, um, because you could just go back to an easy level and grind instead of going to a weird minigame. But whatever. Um, I'm glad you can at least do things like this. Like, this is now a water level, and this is a foresty level, and now it's a ghost house. But... It's just so limited, and I'm really disappointed with that. Hmm... Switch palaces would be amazing if that were a thing that you could have. You could place a, place a level and say, this is a switch palace, please put, like, a big yellow switch at the end and then have yellow blocks. Granted, that's a lot more, like, interconnected than they're doing, but it would be really good and I would love it. Um, you can also have things like a top secret area where you can go get some power-ups and extra lives if you run low, which was a thing in Smoo. Um, which you found through a secret exit, which was also a thing in Smoo. It's just, a lot of the things you could do in the game that this is referencing cannot be done here. And it's really disappointing. And I really, really hope that that wasn't actually the last, like, 
major update that they're doing, or at least the last update that they're doing to this functionality, because currently this functionality is not great. It's It feels like a bare minimum, almost. Uh, like, like, like they've put out a beta version or something. Hmm... Also, I'm not really sure why a bridge has a separate tile type and then these you have to select water or grass. Like, a bridge is just like a tile that is very similar to having a direct line, right? Like, like that one. Eh, I don't know. It, it looks like it's a different visual for the same type of tile. Like, you should be able to say, I'd like this to be a bridge now and get that, rather than having to place a different tile type. I would have thought, but you know, I'm not the one who built this, so who knows. <sighs> you also can't really do... Oh no, you can do a little bit of a curve. There's, there's a curve option there, but it's not very flexible by the looks of things. Let's have a look. Yeah, you can have one type of curve and that's it. Uh, just pull in there too. There we go. That's alright, I guess. It's not great. Hmm. Anyway, uh, so that was uh, Mario Maker 2 version 3. I pretty much covered... I think everything that was added since my initial look. Unless I've forgotten something important, but I don't think I have. Let me just flip through here again, see if there's anything. Like, there's a different Magic Coopers. I didn't look at all of them, but, you know, you get the idea, so that should be fine. Um, I looked at the different types of hat. Yeah, I think I've looked at all the new, new content, so... Yeah, overall, like, I'm glad that worlds are a thing now, but I'm really unimpressed with the world maker they've given us, and I think there's some vital functionality that's missing to be anywhere near as compelling as the worlds in the game that it's referencing right here. <sighs> you also can't make this castle look different, by the way. I guess that's okay, because it's always the end of the world, but uh, it's still annoying. You can make these look different if you want. That's a Goomba now. It's actually a Galoomba. Actually, that's kind of weird because a Galoomba is not a Goomba, and like the level you go to might have actual Goombas in it, so... Mm hmm. It's just very weird. Um, there's also a few things in story mode that are missing, but maybe they'll get added, but they probably won't because they said this is the last major update. Which is also questionable in itself because, um, Mario Maker 1 got so many updates, and this one's only had a couple. Like, Mario Maker 1, at the beginning, it didn't have keys, it didn't have uh, spikes, it didn't have, like, half the types of enemy you'd expect it to have. It was missing heaps of stuff, but they kept expanding on it and adding things, and they not don't seem to be doing it nearly as much with this game. I, I guess maybe they thought they had enough stuff already, but they really don't. Because, you know, the basic purpose of this game is to be a counter-attack against the popularity of smooth ROM hacks and things like that. Um, and yet, a smooth ROM hack, like, if you've seen any of those, they're amazing in how impressive they can be compared to this. <sighs> I should play some smooth ROM hacks. ASMT is pretty good. Anyway, um, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. I hope my, I guess, underwhelmed attitude towards this upgrade does not uh, disappoint you too much, but that's about all I can say about this version of Mario Maker 2 and what's been added, so thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Bye!